Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of the committee. We've been joined by the chair of the subcommittee on capital finance, uh, Vanessa Gibson, uh, Councilmember Roy Lansman, Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Steve Matteo, and Councilmember Barry Gudenchik. Uh, today, the committee will be voting on 24 items, a fiscal 2020 preliminary budget extender, an expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, a transparency resolution, and 20 Article 11 property tax exemptions. Let's start with a pre-considered introduction that would extend certain charter mandated deadlines for several submissions and hearings concerning the, 20, the fiscal 2020 preliminary budget. Notably, this bill would extend the mayor's submission of the preliminary budget and the draft 10-year capital strategy to no later than February 7, 2019. The mayor's submission of the preliminary management report to no later than February 21, 2019, and the council's budget response to April 16, 2019. The full list of changes can be found in the pre-considered introduction and accompany, accompanying committee report. Next are the budget modifications. The first modification is an expense budget modification that represents movements of approximately $572 million of funding between and within city agencies to implement expense budget changes which were reflected in the fiscal 2019 November financial plan. The second is a revenue budget modification that recognizes $506 million of new revenues in fiscal 2019 and authorizes the appropriation of that new revenue and an adjustment to the general reserves to increase the budget stabilization account by $520 million to prepay fiscal 2020 debt service. Next is the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council, or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with the proposed subcontractors used by the organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the, the subcontractors before the subcontractor can be approved. Benjamin Smith from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Last, we have the 20 uh, Article 11 exemptions. The first is Langsam 1 in Councilmember Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to reserve 51 units. The second is Langsam 2 in Councilmember Jonai's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 48 units. The third is Langsam 3 in Councilmember Diaz's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 48 units. The fourth is Langsam 4 in Councilmember Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive uh, a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 33 units. The fifth is Langsam 5 in Councilmember Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 62 units. The sixth is Langsam 6 at 2733 Morris Avenue in Councilmember Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 37 units. The seventh is Langsam 7 at 1249 Tinton Avenue in Councilmember Salamanca's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 13 units. The eighth is Langsam 8 at 14, 1411 Townsend Avenue in Councilmember Gibson's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 16 units. The ninth is Langsam 9 at 1630 McCombs Road in Councilmember Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 51 units. 
The 10th is Langston 10 at 1988 Newbold Avenue in Council Member Diaz's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 51 units. The 11th is Langston 11 at 2816 Jerome Avenue in Council Member Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 52 units. The 12th is Langston 12 at 3510 Decatur Avenue in Council Member Cohen's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 48 units. The 13th is Langston 13 at 2265 Davidson Avenue in Council Member Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 42 units. The 14th is Langston 14 at 464 East 159th Street in Council Member Salamanca's district in the Bronx, which would, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 30 units. The 15th is Langston 16 at 19-25 East 213th Street in Council Member Cohen's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 65 units. The 16th is 55 East Moshe Loop Parkway North in Council Member Cohen's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 44 units. The 17th is 3240 Henry Hudson Parkway East in Council Member Cohen's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 40-year exemption to preserve 107 units. The 18th is 1425 McCombs Road in Council Member Gibson's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 37 units. The 19th is 3630 to 38 West Gun Hill Road in Council Member Cohen's district in the Bronx, which, which would receive a partial 30-year exemption to preserve 44 units. The 20th is Cooper Square Senior Housing in Council Member Rivera's district in the Bronx, which would receive a partial 35-year exemption to preserve 150 units. All the council members in the relevant districts are supportive of these actions. Um, to, uh, the, uh, those are all of today's items, and we'll now um, turn to Ken uh, Godner, uh, first Deputy Director of OMV, and Chuck Brisky, Deputy Director of OMV, to answer questions on the budget modifications. Did you want to, did you want to make a statement first, or do you want to just go straight we're, to We're ready to, for questions. Thank for you. questions, okay. Oh, yes. And Council, would you swear them in, please? You affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief. Do. Okay, so we have a question about Thrive. Um, this mod includes a relatively small number of new needs, but it does include an additional million dollars for Thrive. Given the variety of the new needs made to OMB by um, all uh, and the many city agencies, why did you choose to include additional funding for the Thrive Initiative? The money that's included in this budget is to uh, enhance outreach. Uh, we think it's vital that uh, New Yorkers know the services, mental health services that are available to them. This money is, is um, dedicated to that purpose, and uh, that, that's why we chose to spend the money. And uh, what's the total for the Thrive initiatives? The total for all Thrive citywide? Yeah. Um, I believe. I believe it's 850 million. Uh, and what is the additional 1 million and 13 new positions for, and why is this increase uh, so essential? As I said, the, the positions that are being funded here are for additional Thrive Outreach staff. Um, this is to, to get, uh, to make sure that we have outreach staff deployed in underserved areas, and these staff will assist Thrive in achieving its mission and providing vital mental health support and assistance to New Yorkers who need it. Um, I have some questions on body cameras. Um, the police department will receive, I think it's $4.6 million for new staff and $12.5 million for cabling upgrades and facility work uh, through new needs in, the, in this budget modification. Um, why does the NYPD need additional staff? There are, uh, the principal uh, ad here is for 97 people at the NYPD. Uh, these are civilians who work to support um, the body camera program. That is for staff to review the camera footage, uh, attorneys to help fulfill uh, FOIL requests, 
and assist with the day-to-day -day function of body cameras. Um, you know, the body worn camera program is a, uh, is a new function and will require daily analysis, monitoring, and responses to what we assume will be a large number of FOIL requests. Um, we, are, we have expanded the number of patrol officers wearing the cameras, so likewise the, the amount of footage increases. So um, can you provide the council with a list of those titles? Yes. Okay. Um, I, a, a camera burst into flames recently, and the department halted the camera rollout. What other, what other adjustments have been made to the body-worn camera program? As far as I know, um, the program is, is back on, on schedule in terms of rollout, but uh, we can get back with more information. Okay, and what is the all-in budget for the uh, camera for fiscal um, 2019? Well, uh, I, I know that, uh, I don't know the all-in. Let me get back to you with that. Okay. All right, we're gonna, um, New York City School Support Services. The budget mod adds uh, 34.2 million to the DOE's budget for custodial services. This modification recognizes that not all of the expected efficiencies planned um, when the New York City School Support Services was created have been achieved, including greater than expected staff cost. Further, DOE estimates that the uh, program needs an additional 17 million to cover its costs for fiscal 19, a shortfall that we were already aware of last year. So why has the OMB still not fully funded um, this program? So in this plan, we increased funding for, for NISIS by $37.7 million. Um, we believe that uh, you know, we will fund this, um, we will fund, forget the scratch, we, believe, we will fund this program sufficiently to make sure the schools are safe, well-maintained, and clean. Um, the $37.7 million addresses many of the, the needs that we saw in this program. We are in a continuing dialogue with DOE regarding uh, sufficient funding levels to uh, maintain the cleanliness, cleanliness safety, and, and, and high level of maintenance of the schools. Uh, we are in the discussion with that. Should we, dis, uh, together with DOE, decide additional funding is needed to maintain those levels? We will address that as we roll into the preliminary budget. So you'll get back to us as soon as those discussions? We will indeed. Okay. Um, and why hasn't it still been fully funded? We believe that, that the funding that we've given them uh, so far is sufficient, but we are in discussions with DOE. Uh, that I know that there's some discussion about whether additional funds are needed. We will be uh, looking at how, uh, where we are in the budget uh, year to date uh, as part of the preliminary budget process and uh, whether or not uh, we need to add additional money. As you know, when we uh, uh, initially uh, restructured the custodial uh, process, which we all thought was a terrific breakthrough, we're uh, dedicated to finding efficiencies under the new system, and so we're looking uh, with DOE to see whether additional money is actually needed or, the, or some or all of that money that people have discussed or whether there's additional efficiencies that can be reached without affecting cleanliness, maintenance, and safety of schools. So uh, I believe that uh, not all the efficiencies were achieved pr prior to this. Are you still expecting um, additional um, savings? We expect, we expect uh, DOE to continuously uh, look at this program as they, you know, while it, it feels like it's been out a long time with 1,300 schools, we expect them to take a school-by-school -school approach to make sure that uh, each school has enough money to, to keep a high level of cleanliness and, and safety uh, and remain well-maintained, but that to the extent there are additional funds that, that we feel that there's efficiencies that can be reached, we'll, we're constantly looking for them to, to be boring down on that and trying to make the, the operation the most efficient it can be. And so why were there greater um staff costs? I'm sorry? Why were there greater staff costs than expected? Well, one of the issues uh, has to do with the, uh, that we added money for in this plan was um, to deal with fringe benefit costs for uh, the 
local 94 folks at the schools that were a little higher than anticipated and they're paid by the prevailing, uh, under the prevailing wage. We also, uh, we also added money uh, here to, uh, to support some uh, new schools that were put in and expanding such as programs uh, such as UPRK and lead testing which add to costs. Um, HPD administers the city uh, tax levy and federal community development block grant funds and uh, the fiscal 2019 November plan added I think 30, yeah, 30 million dollars in federal block grant funds um, for the operating budget for NYCHA. Uh, what is the intended use for these funds and uh, will these funds be used towards um, infrastructure investments and repairs? So the additional money is used for the lead programming, uh, including the testing of approximately 135,000 uh, residential units, uh, which is expected to be completed by uh, next year. And that, that's the uh, primary use of those additional monies. Okay, uh, any of my colleagues have questions? Nope, seeing none for coming, and then we're going to move to the vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we just need to wait for the uh, clerk to come. He's in the other room. All right, we've now been joined by our clerk, Billy Martin, and uh, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and a happy and healthy new year, and I'm going to ask Billy to uh, call, the, uh, uh, to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. Vote aye. Gibson. Permission to quickly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I first and foremost want to thank the staff, um, particularly on the links and property items. Uh, there are a lot, uh, a lot in the borough of the Bronx, a lot of pr preservation of affordable housing. But I specifically wanted to recognize the links and properties item number eight, which is 1411 Townsend Avenue, 58 units of affordable housing that we're preserving in the Mount Eden section of my district, uh, as well as 37 units in the uh, 1425 McCombs Road, uh, which is right near my district office. And uh, I've had a long relationship with Langston Properties. They are long time owners in our district, and I am grateful uh, that this extension of an additional uh, regulatory agreement for the next 30 years will preserve rents uh, at an average AMI of 50 to 55 percent of the AMI uh, going up to anywhere from 70 to 80. And that truly is affordable in a district that continues to change um, in terms of keeping families in their homes for the next uh, generation. So I'm grateful to Langsam for their efforts, particularly in all parts of the Bronx, as you recognize, in the West Bronx and the Northwest Bronx. And I'm grateful for uh, their partnership in the district. Uh, so I am thankful, um, asking all of my colleagues to vote in the affirmative on these um, items and I also want to wish all of my colleagues a happy holiday season, uh, Merry Christmas and we look forward to working uh, together in the new year. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Gorenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. A vote of 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. And we'll keep the vote open for another 10 minutes. <laughs> 